Okay, so I right, started PVA in here. You're gonna have the pipe. Just get a little bit scratch. But obviously, it's hard to say. Oh, reissue to make sure PVA. This one's actually pure, as it says. Do we want pure? And the walls are for air, so there's gonna be a wee bit of suction with them. But if I need to give it another wee tight, tight coat, I will. Um, but you may want to, sometimes it will tell you to do like a 5 to 1 on a bare wall and then do a pure mix of the top lap then and I'll just seal in the suction. And again, once this gets nice and tacky, it's still very wet, once it gets nice and tacky, we'll get a mix on and get it plastered. So you put a scrim on the track as well, just has shot a wee tiny bit in places, so put a scrim right there. It. Just well, be buckles and braces. And crack scrim tipped the whole way down. Sometimes it cracks change shape. But that's it, that's the preparation done. And then we'll get the mix on. Just embedded the scrim down the track as sometimes the salt smells not, not greatly a good thing to just put the scrim tape on, it doesn't stick too well. So if you come across something like that where it won't stick like this, you can always embed it with the plaster. So, I want ladders, guys, because these ones are pretty, pretty high. Now we start top and left. Left, left, top, left, top, right. This is obviously a window wall, so I have a door and a window in it, and so I have to fill out these beads. I always try and build them out as sort of much as I can with the first coat. It'll help you later on when you come up. When you come to channels, Again, this wall here had tile adhesive of off it. It's all been removed, and we do have a video to show you how to easily remove it like a hot knife through butter. The wee tip is, guys, you want to try and come down as low as you can, so that when you hit on the ground, you can actually reach the next coat. And again, always cutting as neat as possible. Looks like the tail adhesive, but it's actually just paint left from the tail is coming off. So it's not actually tail adhesive. <laughs> just in case I'm just giving to you over. But so I just go from left to right, bring it down, neat as you can, neat, neat around the corners as much as you can. And then I'll show you this here, put, put the bottom up the middle. Okay guys, so the top of this wall is on, so we're just getting the bottom on the so. You need to be very neat coming down your corner, you don't want to mess up the, the wall that you're plastering to. Whether or not you've plastered it or it's even too deep plastered because 
in one of the big, big messy corners. We get a harder one forward. So ten pin. Spend a bit of time there, making them neat. Again, each of the long swoops, keep it as lean as possible. Even though it's just your first coat, it's still important to keep it nice and tidy. Now, that PVA is holding back the suction, but obviously this wall being a burnt plastic wall, it's still a little higher suction than the likes of a pavement wall or a plastic wall. wall. <coughs> So again, the nice of pipes and stuff, I'm actually gonna get a wee bag around them just to keep them clean. So the plumber likes me, but we're working around brackets here. Don't don't mind too much working around brackets, but you gotta have to be careful of your knuckles and stuff. Um, oops. You can give you a quite nasty cut, and also you don't want to hit them with your trowel. So just take your time around them. And it's much neater to do it this way because, well, one, the plumber has an easier life, he can just put the, put the radiator back onto the brackets, but also when they paint that, you're not working around the radiator, it doesn't look very nice. So I'll continue on here, we we'll get the bottom one the exact same way as I'm doing here, nice and neat and tidy. Trying to get a nice big long strokes on it and keep it to chase the lines away. And we'll come back to his second coat. Yeah, so after your first coat, make sure and um, wash your child, especially the back. You know, it's not just as important to wash the front because you're going to be getting that dirty again shortly with your second coat, but definitely the back here. Again, that will deposit all that, that plastic. Don't wash it, that deposits on all the corners of the ceiling and the, the wall you're plastering up to. So you want to get them child washed. Again, it's not just as important, but if you want to give it a wipe, just so it's easier there, go ahead. And again, turn my it like I was doing in the bucket, and that'll save on your floor getting soaking wet. Okay, so, you're going to second coat the wall now. It's, you know, it's still got a bit of moisture and a bit of movement in it, but it is pulling in, so it's definitely ready for second coat. You don't want to get too far ahead of it. So, I'm not using the ladders in here. Put them on as neat as possible. Just taking your time to get the corner, guys, because you don't want to be making a big mess on the wall you've just plastered. Or if the wall that's not clean plastered, you also don't want to make a mess on it. Again, I'm going to break it down in low so that I can make it fall into my house. Pretty big high walls, really. So once they come and challenge us up here, we use step ladders so that we can get better each other. This is just for speed of getting along, really. Making sure you fill all your no points, guys, and don't be leaving any massive lines like so, especially on a wall like this that has a bit of a on it. It can really pull in quick. 
catch you off guard, you don't want that. Close. I'm sorry, you take the top. I'm going to go all the way out of the corner, it'll be nice and neat there. We'll come back around to it. Okay, guys, we're going to just coat the bottom here. The top's all the rest all there, so just uh, for the demonstration. Um, again, one of the floor legs, so it's nice and happy to reach. So, what I do is I just pull up. I try to pull up the corner as close as I can, and then pull out. And again, I have always going on with turn me nice and tight at the corner. So if you do, when you come close here, you'll see this. So if you come close, you'll see this wee bit on the end. Try and clean them off as you go, guys. You should be able to start with hot. Just so that when you're trying up, it comes in nice and neat. And then again, plastic's all about the angles, the corners, the beads and things, so that's the other things that every person will notice. But just back it under the wall here then and just bring it all right up. Make sure you go high enough where you're catching the top coat that you put on. And again, just chase them legs away so it's all nice and neat. And this wall here, particularly, it's got a wee bit of pull in it, so let's say in 10 minutes, it will definitely need a, a, a wee quick trial in. And if you do notice as well, it's coming in very, very deep because it's tightening. And again, that's by design, we're doing that on purpose here, because if we left it like that, you know, if we just slap it on, when we come back, that rib is going to be, you know, it's going to be very hard to press that in because the stuff's drying out a bit quicker. So, I have to be neat, neat. Have to be on the game, on the ball. So, for that line, guys, I are always trying to go neater. Again, guys, I have all the set coatings done, so make sure you wipe your trail, both sides. Front down there. Very important. And we're actually finished with the hog. And we'll have everything all filled out nicely. Again, if you do need to put a little drop on, you can just have to wash it again. But also make sure and wash the back of it, the back of it. Now keep the weight down. Just make sure your bullets, bullets, scoops, and gel is all clean now that you're finished with them. And you just need some clean water and a brush to channel up. Okay, so I've already pulled the corner out there. And Hey guys, watch your, watch your sheet on angle as you go. See the wall, and then you don't want to pull it down. This wall, like I was saying, with more or less flat it in with the second as well. So, as you see, it's pretty neat and tiny as it is, but this wall particular needs just a wee bit of water on it just because of the suction. So, it is going up a bit faster than if the wall had a paint on or as a cast of football. Basically, I mean, everything we're doing now is the same for every wall, any back end. It's just the tendons are going to change and maybe hard, how soon you need to use water or how much water you need to use. Again, I prefer the brush because if you can wet the wall and you can see your angles as you go or if you have a spray bottle, you still, still sort of need a brush to clean your angles and some it. But I'm sure some plasters don't do that, they, they just go ahead and maybe scrape it and it off with a wee squirty ball, but I find the brush lasts a lot longer so I can clean your trowel as you go for a squirty ball. I think I'm going to have that part of do that. So again, you should see this need to be done on the and as I was saying, it seems the coating, guys. Make sure you're coming down low enough. And that way, and that way you're actually pressing up the top end. You don't want to be overstressing. So, just show you the bottom here now. Right? Uh, and again, next to the trowel is clean. Clean any beads up off the wall, it shouldn't be there. I and mean, then, watch your angle. Just remember, it was a wee bit dirty there last time, so it will need a bit of a wash. 
can do. Cut it in the angle, get a push, and then coil. So the idea is stand again, see if you can pull up along the angle, and also coil it. So you're trying to both ways in the corner. Very important. Now, stop, you get a big hook in the wall. To keep on chopping this way, you'll get a big, you'll get a bit of a hook. You don't want that. So, then you pull the corner out. It's all straight forward until the far end, or until we get something awkward brackets or shots, like so. But again, I'm just as you see, I'm just chasing the water. And there is a wee bit of flat if you do have a hole, fill it in, pull it back away. But this was pretty tidy, as is. So next time you come through this wall, it will nearly be finished with the next trial, to be honest, the way, the way it is pulling in. But as you see, I have had to kill myself here with a lot of effort because it's so neat. The coat is so neat, and the first and second coat were neat enough to almost pass as a flat nib. So, what we start to pay attention to them, set the details for you guys. Again, watch your knuckles and your trial on there. And just want to stand with it. Now, do that all the way to the corner, guys, and then just, just ease up on the bar and take it away from this. That's, we've covered a lot now, so far we've already covered the first coat, the preparation, the first coat, the second coat, and now this is the, this is really the first shell of the sort of bypass the flattening in stage. Again, like I say, everything's ten in the class. So we're we'll going to do the second shell here, and this wall probably will need one more shell after. And again, just going along the top here. Um, I'll show you as far as I'll pull this corner out and hold it a little bit. This wall is getting skinned, but you don't want to leave too much on the corner anyway, so try to give it a wash as you go. So we'll just pull it this way out there. Gives you the better angle, as for what I was doing in the first shot as well. But Again, you can fill in, but this stage you really shouldn't have anything left to fill it. I'll just get this bottom of the channel up queens there as well, show you that. Really, get your channel all the way along. And then, as soon as you've traveled, you want to get the water. Clean, clean, fresh water, guys. Well, always keep the back of your channel clean. That's just false finish now, so we're wanting to keep it finished. You can have it all messy. It's all good there. So, you can't, this stage, guys, this wall is actually stiff enough. I can brush the water on. And plus, I need big, big turrets in the wall, I need big marks, not to panic a bit. And if there is any holes to fill in, just put a wee bit in. Tell it but this stage you shouldn't have too many to have any right now. You might want to be core. Toss the brush at this stage as well. Have this all pretty neat. So I'm just going to pull the whole bottom along like so. Bring in all the water from the top of the channel to the bottom of the channel and towards the wall there. It's just about to be plastered, as you can see. And again, if there's anything to fill in, get it filled. It's always going to be awkward around these brackets, guys, so just you will have to spend a wee bit of your head. Make sure you fill everything and get a trial this neat. So, and you just continue in to the far corner. And then you'll pull your water out, just like I did at the top there. Just pull your water out, but try and reduce the amount of water you put by that stage so that you're not fighting with yourself and water. So I lost the, the original sound for this for some reason. It just didn't record, but here we are with the voiceover. So on to the last trial the wall has been sitting for about 20 30 minutes now and got the wee tussle brush for cleaning my corners this time round 
and again you don't need just as much water on the last trowel because the wall's pretty solid and if there is any tiny little holes now is definitely the time to get them because after this pass the wall is going to set up uh, we'll show you that just just lower down on the wall where it is starting to pepper uh, and it just turns brown where, where it really is setting but basically just like the stages beforehand starting top left I worked myself all the way across to the right and just working the water down the wall and making sure it give there's a lot more pressure and the angle of the trowel is a lot more open at this stage and you don't necessarily need another trowel after this stage but we will show it for the demonstration uh, just in case you do want to polish the walls up again just at this stage you, you can easily run the brush up and down the wall also without worrying that it's going to mark the wall as the wall is pretty firm as you see i'm doing it quite a lot and i find it's it's a bit tidier it's not just as messy splashing and you can control the amount of water you put on if you do want to run the brush over it and trail it so you can see these lines here guys i'm bringing them down the wall and you just don't want to leave them fat marks on the wall because they can leave horrible little lines that will not paint and also you want to try them out try and don't leave too much water on the wall as it can tear at this stage if that if you're slower getting along the top but then you come back to do the bottom then wee bits can tear so you, you'd want to take them away also if you're too early the wall can tear and rip and also if you have stinking dirty water can also cause it to happen so just down here at the bottom keeping the angle nice and clean and pulling out from it this time and then up and then it's just easy chasing the water away from left to right and catching whatever water up above from on the top you can see here what i promised is the wee bit that is setting again sometimes when you have a burr wall it it sets without actually looking like it sets so that's where the bit of experience comes in and where if you just touch the wall and feel it you'll get more of a sense of how far on the wall is how solid it is and what type of moisture is in the wall and again just just pulling it all the way along and this wall is coming in brilliantly it's very very smooth so technically it doesn't need another trial but i will show that in the next stage all the same right so guys this wall doesn't doesn't necessarily need shame but again flexi trials are great for this because it takes enough pressure as well and um, the walls fully set like this here say where it's brown you don't need any water but if it's still sort of still setting you may want to just make sure you have your blade done before you do it and that will stop it ripping and turn on the surface just to sort of lubricate the trial so it doesn't cause too much friction when you're trialing you tally back at it it will smooth it up to touch you know and be nice to touch and um, some people think it's not great when it comes to paint but when the wall's fully dry it's still will paint good enough but the reason why i would do that i would recommend that especially when you do the trade is for a couple of reasons you're going to break your towels in further so that they're actually better to use and second reason is you can feel the wall makes it so you know, there's no misses on it. You just it's just an like inspection really and it covers you on all the angles that you, you can give it all on to be quite clean and make sure you don't miss anything. But as far as that guys, that's just the last thing to say about this wall. It's you know, about two weeks time it'll be ready for paint. Possibly a week, but you recommend it two weeks before you paint new plaster. That's it. Hard plaster wall guys in a nutshell.